In the compelling stair painting she renders the contours and features of the face and the nuances of skin texture and color in strokes both bold and meticulous. The present work belongs to a series of paintings and works on paper focused on the same motif and composition, that of a young boy looking out of the picture plane, mouth ajar, as though in some inscrutable state of shock. The first instance of its appearance belongs to Stair, 2004-05 in the Broad Collection and finds further iteration in three other major works on canvas Red Stair Head 1, 2 and 4, as well as the present Stair 3. Androgynous and childlike, the gender, age and identity of this figure is left ambiguous, while, akin to other unidentified subjects in Jenny Saville's output, possessing aspects of the artist's own physiognomy. Okay, open your eyes, and let the world in. Follow me on a journey into your body's second most complex organ after the brain. But pay attention now, all of this will happen in the blink of an eye. First job at hand, get inside. Let's follow this dust particle. It floats up and lands on the cornea, that's the outer dome covering your eye. You can feel its shape right now. Close your lids, put your index finger over them, wash your hands first, and move your eyes side to side. Feel that bump? That's it. No blood vessels here. Your corneas get oxygen directly from the air, so your eyes breathe. But it's full of super sensitive nerves. They sense something foreign, and the fastest muscles in your body get to work. Your eye blinks. That dust particle gets washed away. Hmm, let's try this again. The only way to get into the eye is with light. That's how your vision works, and it's why you can't see in the dark. Duh. But how do we see objects that don't emit light themselves? The light coming from the source, be it a light bulb or the sun, hits the object. Some of it gets absorbed, and some of it bounces off and enters our eye. It's a nice reflection on you. More on that a bit later. Born in 1970 in Cambridge, England, Saville attended the Glasgow School of Art from 1988 to 1992 spending a term at the University of Cincinnati in 1991. Her studies focused her interest in imperfections of flesh, with all of its societal implications and taboos. Saville had been captivated with these details since she was a child. She has spoken of seeing the work of Tizian and Tintoretto on trips with her uncle, and of observing the way her piano teacher's two breasts, squished together in her shirt, became one large mass. 